Hey there, so welcome back to another video. So just disclaimer, I hope the lighting isn't too bad and I know you can fully see that there's like that over there. It's a rough day, okay? We have no shedding. There's no ring light today. Hopefully the lighting outside is good enough for you to see what I'm doing. So today we are doing a look inspired by the... Hold on, it's really bothering me. Oh, as you can see here. I should just move this side closer. Okay, period. <laughs> Fixed it. So as you can see, we are doing a look today inspired by the non-binary flag. And we're going to be talking about non-binary and what it means to be non-binary, the misconceptions people have about non-binary people, and also some history about the non-binary community. So today's look is also, it's actually quite reminiscent of when I did that Liza Kronjevich look. So I did like I said, I don't know if I said it, I hope I did. I created all these looks before I'm doing them, so I did plan. So in case you're wondering why I know what it looks like before I've done it, but anyways. Thank you so much for all the love and support that I've been receiving on my previous videos. I really appreciate it. I'm just so happy that I get to educate people more about what goes on in our community. So I'm very happy about that. So if you have been enjoying the videos, um... If you haven't watched any of my other videos, please go watch them. They're very nice, I promise. If you've been enjoying those videos and you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel. We're only in like the middle of Pride Month now, so there's still four more videos to come. Three? I don't know. No? I don't know. I think there's four or five. I don't know. But anyways, there's still more videos to come, so if you want to see more of those videos, then please subscribe to my channel. But with that being said, Let's get on into the video. Okay, so let's get into it. Non-binary or genderqueer is an umbrella term for gender identities that are neither male nor female. Identities that are outside of the gender binary. Non-binary identities fall under the transgender umbrella since non-binary people typically identify with a gender that is different from their assigned sex. Though some binary binary some binary oh, some non-binary individuals do not consider themselves transgender. So another thing, I will talk a little bit about cisgender people. So someone who's cisgender is someone who identifies with their given gender from birth. So someone who is born a male and identifies as male or someone who's born a female and identifies as female. The term non-binary can mean different things to different people. So if somebody tells you they're non-binary, it's always important to ask what non-binary means to them. Some people who are non-binary experience their gender as both male and female, and others experience their gender as neither male nor female. Although non-binary is often regarded as a new idea, the identifier has been around for as long as civilization has. In fact, non-binary gender has been recorded as far back as 400 BC to 200 AD, when Hijras, people in India who identified as beyond male or female, were referenced in ancient Hindu texts. India is one of the many countries around the world with language and social culture that acknowledges those whose gender can't be exclusively categorized as male or female. The idea that gender is a spectrum is grounded in two widely accepted beliefs, historical precedence and basic biology. From Hedras in India to, I'm not sure how to pronounce this word, but I'll put it up on the screen. I think it's Mahus in Hawaii. There have always been people whose gender doesn't fit into the stereotype of what it means to be a man or woman. These examples of non-binary and non-conforming gender throughout history have laid an important groundwork for how we understand gender identity today. So sex isn't always binary, even on a biological level. One in every 2,000 people are born with an intersex condition. Intersex is used to describe people who have chromosomes, anatomy, or other sex characteristics that can be categorized as exclusively male or female. The notion that both sex and gender are binary, with everyone fitting into either male or female, is a social construct. This system has historically been used to differentiate between biological and gender related traits in males and females. So the idea that there's male and female isn't false 
it's just incomplete. Many people, intersex or not, have a mix of biological traits or gender expressions that falls outside the male or female checkbox. Although more research is needed, growing data suggests that there's some biological component to the gender identity, just not in the way that you might think. For example, attempts to align the gender identity of a person who is intersex with the external genitalia are typically unsuccessful. This suggests that the sexual characteristics you're born with may not always align with your gender identity. So a common question that people may have is whether or not non-binary is the same as genderqueer. The word queer was originally introduced to challenge fixed notions of sexuality and include people who are attracted to more than just one type of person. The term signifies an inclusive attraction to those whose gender can't be exclusively categorized as male or female. Placing gender in front of the word queer conveys the idea that those who are genderqueer have multiple gender identities and expressions. This is also known as fluid gender identity or expression. Although the terms genderqueer and non-binary have similarities, they aren't necessarily interchangeable. It's always important to ask someone's preferred identifier. So, Let's talk about non-binary pronouns. We live in a world where nearly everywhere a person goes, they're gendered. It's all too common for groups of people to be referred to as ladies and gents, or guys and gals, when the person speaking has no real knowledge about the gender identities of those they're referring to. For many non-binary people, pronouns are about more than just how they want to be addressed. They've become a powerful way to assert an aspect of their gender that's often unseen or unaligned with others' assumptions. Because of this, pronouns have the power to either affirm or invalidate a non-binary person's existence. So here are some binary pronouns. So she, her, and he, him are binary pronouns. And then we have gender neutral pronouns, which are most commonly used by people who are non-binary, which is they, them. The pronouns someone uses can change over time and across environments. For example, some non-binary people may use gender neutral pronouns only in spaces where they feel safe. They may allow people at work or school to refer to them using traditional binary pronouns instead of their preferred pronouns. You should always use the pronouns a person tells you are appropriate to use for them. If you're unsure or have no information about how someone wants to be addressed, opt to use gender neutral pronouns. So, how do we start using gender neutral language? Incorporating gender neutral language into everyday conversation is an easy way to challenge gender stereotypes and to be inclusive of those who don't want to be addressed using gendered words or pronouns. When an incorrect pronoun or gendered word is used to refer to someone, it's called misgendering. We all make mistakes and misunderstanding and misgendering a person at some point in time will likely be one of them. When this happens, it's important to apologize and try to use appropriate language moving forward. Using gender neutral language is one way to avoid misgendering completely. However, it's important to affirm an individual by using the words they use to describe themselves. When meeting someone for the first time, ask how they like to be referred to or what pronouns they use. If you're addressing a group, or are unsure of someone's pronouns, opt for gender neutral language, such as they or people. Instead of using boys, girls, man, woman, or men and women, use person, people, or humans. Instead of using ladies and gents, use folks. Instead of using daughter or son, use child. Instead of using sister or brother, you can use sibling. Instead of using niece or nephew, you can say nibbling. <laughs> Instead of using mother or father, you can say parents. Husband or wife can be replaced with spouse. And grandfather or grandmother can be replaced with grandparents. So the bottom line, by acknowledging and affirming non-binary gender identities, we create space for gender diversity that truly exists to emerge. We each have a role to play in ensuring that environments are safe and supportive. Many people resistant to cultural change will blame the newness of terms used to define it. The newness of a label is often used to allude to the idea that it is an invention, something that is not true, but rather made up. It's the criticism many people are applying to non-binary genders. However, something that has been around since the 15th century cannot be rejected by its newness. As people assigned male or female at birth celebrate their androgyny, the patriarchy is fighting back, declaring gender identity as a new 
new construct that is fabricated by those who strive for difference. It's important to acknowledge that the newness of the term non-binary is not an indictment to its existence, but rather a celebration of its acknowledgement. For many people, Disney's adaptation of the myth of Hua Mulan might be the first time they consider non-binary identities. While the term non-binary is never used in the family-friendly flick, in the title song Reflection, Mulan proclaims, I will never pass for a perfect bride or a perfect daughter, that if I were truly to be myself, I would break my family's heart. A 20-year-old movie certainly doesn't indicate the newness of betraying gender roles, nor does the 1,700-year-old source material. Even earlier, in 14,000 BC, Hatshepsut ruled as pharaoh of ancient Egypt. The statues that survive her celebrate the strength of her rule. She is depicted in a few different ways, from a woman wearing men's clothing to a feminine face upon a man's body. Hatshepsut defied the strict gender roles of ancient Egypt, and the statues that still stand are evidence of their defiance. These examples are anecdotal and often follow a common theme. A person assigned female at birth defying the gender roles assigned to their sex to achieve something greater. However, even these examples hardly hold a candle to the rich history outlying the people of a third gender. This third gender, sometimes defined as neither a man or a woman, is present in several ancient cultures. From Hindu priests to eunuchs to virgins in the Temple of Artemis, holiness has transcended gender. So gender has always been used as an oppressive instrument. So gender is used to highlight the differences between people rather than highlight the inherent strength in all of us. Strength of character is not something that is defined by maleness or femaleness. Strength is an attribute of the human condition to thrive when tested and fight for what we believe in. The human condition is what drives people to discover what gender means to them. They are able to transcend the baggage of strict gender roles and achieve greatness. The history of defying gender roles is as ancient as humanity itself, which leads to the question, why are people so threatened by non-binary identification overall? Why is it that the rich history of gender fluidity needs to be constantly torn down by patriarchs of binary culture and rejected because of its newly found public acceptance? Perhaps Hatshepsut knew something that other cisgender people did not. Okay, so there we have it. As you can see, my makeup is done. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Obviously, it's not completely symmetrical, which I feel like punching a wall. But, I mean, I'm still very happy with how this turns out. And I think that it actually is very reminiscent of the flag. So that's what's really important. With that being said, I hope that this look is reminiscent enough of the flag to whoever wants it to be very reminiscent of the flag. And I hope this look has made the non-binary community proud. I hope the information given in this video has made the non-binary community proud. And thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great morning or evening or night. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.